All right, well, again, thank you, Molly, for inviting me to this awesome symposium. Um, so today, our story starts uh, about a quarter of a million years ago um, in Africa. So at least uh, the Neanderthal and Denisovan lineages had already left uh, Africa. Uh, and at the time, it was inhabited by a very charismatic small dipteran uh, that made its living on rotted fruit. And at some point, um, a, a propagule, a fly, a group of flies, an inseminated female, made its way to the lovely tropical island of Mauritius, probably um, via Madagascar. Once there, it undoubtedly encountered Rufus cuculatus, um, the large flightless pigeon uh, denizen of that island. Um, fast forward to about 10,000 years ago, uh, when this ancestral African population uh, started to spread throughout the world. It became commensal with humans um, and went to uh, every continent along with us and our garbage. Um, about 500 years ago, Dutch sailors got to the island of Mauritius, where they too encountered Rufus cuculatus and uh, drove it extinct largely by eating it. Um, and then 100 years ago, uh, Alfred Sternevent uh, named uh, this species Drosophila simulans, um, and then... Uh, the year I was born, Jean David uh, discovered uh, this species and named it Drosophila mauritiana. So um, these are the two species I work with as a system for understanding speciation. Um, and so uh, let's think about what has happened in that quarter of a million years uh, since uh, the ancestor of mauritiana got to the island of Mauritius. Um, so these species are characterized by a relatively recent divergence time and large ancestral effective population size. Uh, so what that means is that uh, a minority of the loci in the genome look like this, um, where they are reciprocally monophyletic uh, and sort by species. A majority of loci in the genome show incomplete lineage sorting, um, where alleles from, let's say, simulans are more similar, uh, share a more recent common ancestor with alleles from Mersiana than they do with other alleles from simulans and vice versa. Uh, we estimate that... Um, the within species genealogy on average is about uh, two to three times deeper than uh, this species divergence. So there's a lot of ancestral polymorphism segregating these populations, a lot of incomplete lineage sorting. Um, in other words, if we wanted to think about a genealogical species concept, these would not be good genealogical species. Um, if you want to consider polymorphism and divergence, um, pi and dxy are roughly the same. Uh, so net divergence between these species is about zero. That is, the divergence between them is about the same um, per nucleotide as the polymorphism within each of them. So why do we call these two species? Oh, oops, I uh, don't want to say that yet. What I want to say is, uh, in addition to incomplete lineage sorting, these two species, uh, we have lots of evidence of more ancient and more recent gene flow between them. So they are exchanging genes. Um, we know first that about 14,000 years ago, a Drosophila simulans mitochondria got into Mauritiana and um, replaced most of the mitochondrial haplotypes in that species. We also have lots of evidence for uh, introgression at nuclear loci. Um, so there are lots of now really fancy, powerful ways to look for introgression. We chose a, a method that I think is, is appealing in its sort of uh, simplicity, um, and that is to take sequences from uh, two multiple alleles from two species, and then just look at the number of differences, uh, nucleotide differences between each pair of uh, a peach pair of sequences of the two species, and then calculate the minimum divergence, so the two uh, lineages from each of the species that are most similar, and then the average across all of the pairwise comparisons. Um, and this, uh, take the ratio of those two, is called GMIN, developed by Anthony Geneva. Uh, and um, this statistic has the nice feature that it distinguishes incomplete lineage sorting, such as this, uh, from uh, recent introgression, because if there is a recent introgression event, then some of the uh, alleles in one species will be much more similar to alleles from the other species than they will uh, to the other alleles from the recipient or species in this case. Um, and so gmin here will be small. And so we determine uh, significance by coalescent simulations. Whoops, wrong way. And um, we find indeed a uh, evidence for recent gene flow between these species. If we calculate gmin in either 5kb or 10kb windows, we get a signature like this where we see um, runs of windows up to two or 300kb um, that show evidence for uh, recent introgression. And at one of these loci, the um, you know, gene tree at that, for that window looks something like this where you can see that clearly um, 
Some of these simulans alleles are more closely related to Mercian alleles than they are to other simulans alleles. Across the genome, we find uh, 48 such regions that show evidence of recent, recent introgression. GMIN is, is not particularly well powered to detect ancient introgression, um, so we think these are really what happened yesterday, um, and there may have been uh, lots more introgression in the past that we can't see with this method. So if these things, these two populations, have lots of segregating ancestral polymorphism, if they're sharing genes, uh, why do we call them different species? Uh, there are a few reasons for that. Um, one is that they do show some morphological differentiation, particularly in male and female reproductive structures. Um, so this is the, the business end of a male fly um, with some structures that interact with the female during copulation, uh, the anal plate, the posterior lobe, and the claspers. And as you can see, um, they're quite different in their shape and the um, architecture of the bristles um, that, uh, and this probably affects mating success in, in interspecific matings. Um, the, there is some prezygotic behavioral isolation, um, so they sing different songs, um, and uh, in particular, Drosophila Mercianna females, some of the time are choosy and prefer males that sing their own song. Um, but the main reason that, that I think the most important reason that we call these two different species is because there is strong postzygotic reproductive isolation uh, in the form of hybrid male sterility. So in both directions of the cross, um, F1 hybrid females are fine, they're viable, they're fertile. Um, F1 hybrid males are viable and completely sterile. Uh, and so I don't really, we've had a great introduction on Dobzhansky, Muller, and compatibility, so I don't need to go through that. Um, just to, to highlight that the, the sterility is a result of uh, incompatibilities, interactions between alleles from simulans and Mercianna that don't work too well together, uh, in this case, cause male-specific uh, reproductive failure. Um, so uh, this system, this particular cross where we look at the effect of Mercianna alleles in a simulans background, uh, has been studied now for mm, almost 30, more than 30 years. Um, and uh, what has come out of that is that there are many uh, let's say at least 15 regions of the genome that when you move these from Mercianna into simulans are sufficient to completely sterilize males. Um, and so I don't mean a genotype like this. I mean each one of these causes males to be sterile. Most of the autosomal, uh, all of the autosomal regions that have been studied so far are recessive, so you need two copies. Um, and as I've shown in this picture, about half of them are on the X chromosome. So these sterility factors, these sterility regions are strongly enriched on the X chromosome relative to the autosomes. So uh, in my lab, we're interested in trying to figure out what happened. What happened in 250,000 years between these two very similar species that have been exchanging genes? Uh, nonetheless, uh, the genome is, is in that direction 15-fold at least sterile. So what are the genetic changes that cause it? How do those disrupt spermatogenesis? And ultimately, we'd like to know what are the evolutionary forces that drove those, fi those mutations to fixation? Um, so to get at this, we've been working on the X-linked part of it. So we've been trying to understand the genetic basis, uh, the, the genes on the X chromosome that when you move them from Mercianna into simulans cause male sterility. To do this, we've generated some uh, introgression genotypes where we back cross um, segments of the X chromosome from Mercianna into a simulans background. We cover most of the euchromatic portion of the X with these. We have more or less six of these regions. Um, all of these intervals uh, cause males to be completely sterile. So within each one of these segments of the X chromosome, there is a factor or combination of factors that together sterilize males. Um, the way that they sterilize males, I'm uh, going to be very brief on this point, is that they uh, cause azoospermia. So these males don't make sperm. So here are testes from a wild-type fertile simulans, um, and we have a few landmarks that we can follow to see how spermatogenesis is going. Uh, these uh, stringy things are spermatid bundles, so after meiosis, 64 spermatids uh, in concert elongate to give the long, one millimeter long tail um, that Drosophila sperm have. Um, we can see with a GFP marker, uh, that the nuclei reshape, so they go from being the round nuclei of a spermatid to ultimately being a, a needle uh, pointy sperm head. Um, and in the seminal vesicle, which is outlined in yellow here, we can see in a, in a fertile male lots of, of sperm. Um, in all of our introgression genotypes, we see no sperm. So um, all of them seem to get through meiosis. All of them we see bundles, so we get this far, um, but the seminal vesicles are always empty and they never make any sperm. So it's not like they make faulty sperm, they don't finish spermatogenesis. Um, we do see some amount of reshaping, so these nuclei have sort of 
gotten to an intermediate stage called the canoe stage. This phenotype does vary between our introgressions, so it seems like there is some variability in how far they get, or at least in this part of the process. Um, but in general, they all seem to converge on an, uh, a no sperm phenotype. Okay, so in order to understand what's inside of these intervals, um, we undertook meiotic mapping, where we forced recombination events within each of these intervals. Um, got recombinant genotypes, phenotyped them, and then genotyped them by sequencing using a pretty similar approach to what Molly described. Um, and so this figure shows uh, each of these lines is an individual recombinant genotype, and then the color of the line indicates the fertility, the average fertility of 10 replicate males that we test for um, fertility. And so uh, down here, this is uh, averaged across all of the lines that have a Mauritiana SNP at this position, um, the, either the proportion of those 10 males that produced you know, five or fewer offspring, and the mean number of progeny, and those track pretty well. Um, so what you can see is that there are three broadly fertile zones, so this tip of the X chromosome, and then a segment here and a segment here, that are mostly fertile. We can introgress those, and they seem to have fertility levels similar to simulans wild-type controls. And then everywhere else, there is some amount of sterility. And in many cases, we have small regions that we infer um, may contain one or a few factors that are sufficient to completely sterilize males. Um, so we've got both strong, we think, Mendelian factors, uh, as well as some regions where it looks like it's more quantitative. Um, and so we are now in the business, um, as Professor Barton said, of doing the hard work to track down the pesky genes. Um, and in some of these cases, we're getting pretty close. I don't have much to say about it today. I'll just point out that in some of these cases, what looked like a strong Mendelian factor upon more close dissection seems to be turning into a set of linked things that have epistatic interactions. Um, so uh, that's to say, on the one hand, it seems like some of these regions are getting genetically a little more messy. On the other hand, it kind of exacerbates the seriousness of the situation because it means that it's not just one, two, three, four things that have fixed on the X chromosome, uh, or five or six, but maybe a dozen or maybe more. Um, so as the genetic architecture gets more complicated, obviously we have more loci that we can implicate. Um, all right, so I'll come back to individual factors in a bit. Um, but first, I want to talk about trying to understand how these, what the interacting partners are. So um, remember that the incompatibilities involve two loci interactions between, in our case, simulans, X-linked alleles, that must cause sterility um, because of their interactions with, uh, sorry, Mershon alleles that must cause sterility due to interactions with simulans alleles elsewhere in the genome, right? This Mauritian allele is perfectly fine in a Mauritian male. And so those interactions must be with uh, loci in the autosome uh, or the Y chromosome uh, or in our genotypes potentially elsewhere on the X chromosome as well. Um, so to try and understand if any of these, the, the role of XY interactions uh, in causing sterility between these species, uh, we undertook to move the Drosophila mercianna Y into simulans. So previous reports in the literature said you can't do this. They said that the Y chromosome in simulans, uh, the Mershana Y chromosome is sterile in a simulans background. Sometimes you should ignore what you read. Um, and so we used fancy Drosophila chromosomes to make uh, F3 males, so F2 males that carried both a Mauritiana Y chromosome and a simulans Y chromosome. So as long as some of these genotypes are fertile, maybe because the simulans Y is dominant, um, we could get F3 males. And then if um, the Y chromosome is fertile and we've removed enough autosomal material, we should be able to get fertile males. Um, and this was accomplished by an incredibly talented undergraduate, my, my fly sensei, Jordan, um, who was able to do this. It was hard, but um, he succeeded. And once we got it, it turns out that um, the Mershana Y chromosome is pretty much perfectly fertile in a simulans background. Um, so here we just have a uh, number of offspring for individual males for our simulans control, our Mauritiana control, um, and then our Mauritiana Y in our simulans background. Uh, we do see, you know, this is statistically significant. There is lower fertility, but by no means are these males, uh, at least many of them, are not sterile at all. Some of them produce over 200 offspring. So uh, that first tells us that there are no significant uh, interactions between the simulans X and the Mauritiana Y chromosome to cause sterility. We can also now use this genotype to test whether any of our X-linked interactions, um, any of our X-linked factors from Mauritiana, cause sterility because of their interactions with the simulans Y chromosome. Um, so we did this. We crossed our 2P, our introgressions, to this uh, sim Y, and the answer is none of them. So we see zero recovery of fertility in any of our 2P lines. We've tested a whole bunch of males, and we never saw a single progeny come crawling out of there. So that tells us that all of these X-linked factors uh, must cause sterility by interacting with autosomal loci in the simulans genome. 
Okay, um, so uh, I want to point out here that in some of these regions, we have a lot of sterility. And the way that we did this mapping, we're actually constrained to where in an interval like this, if there's a sterility factor here and a sterility factor here, um, we can't really get at things in the middle. Um, and so there may be, the point is there's, in some of these intervals, there are multiple things. Um, and one of uh, my students has been working on this region, and we've, we've gotten a, a sterility factor, and that's because, a gene, we've got it down to a gene, and that's because we sort of had an idea of what to be looking for. Um, so we have confirmed, repeated, um, the discovery of the Odysseus hybrid sterility gene. So this is a hybrid sterility locus that was first mapped by Chao Ti Ting and Chengyi Wu um, between, in this cross. And indeed, we, we find that Odysseus does cause sterility. Um, I will say at the moment that it seems in our hands that it's much more genetically simple and high, highly penetrant than um, they claimed it was. I don't know what the reason for that is. But you can see, again, here's uh, the extent of introgressions and those that stop short of Odysseus and go for another uh, maybe megabase that way are fertile. And then if they include uh, the last two, uh, the three prime exons of Odysseus, which is where uh, the business end, it seems to be, is uh, they are sterile. So Odysseus encodes a uh, DNA binding protein with a homeobox domain. And about uh, 10 years ago, um, Harmeet Malik uh, showed that um, the Odysseus, the Mauritiana allele of Odysseus, binds to the simulans Y chromosome, but not the Mauritiana Y chromosome, not its own Y chromosome. So these are images from uh, larval brain cells where you can get very nice mitotic chromosome preparations. And so what they showed was that the simulans Odysseus binds to the simulans X and the fourth chromosome. Uh, which is a small heterochromatic chromosome, and the Mauritiana allele binds to the simulans X, the simulans fourth, and the simulans Y chromosome, uh, but not its own. Um, so this suggests that an interaction between Odysseus and the Y chromosome might underlie sterility. We might have missed that um, in our 2P uh, experiment because 2P6 has multiple things. Odysseus is only one of them, so maybe some of the other ones interact with the autosomes but maybe Odysseus interacts with the Y. Um, and indeed, uh, by crossing in our Mauritiana Y chromosome, we confirm um, this interaction. So it does seem like Odysseus causes sterility, at least in part by interacting with the Mauritiana, uh, with the simulans Y chromosome. Um, so here is our pure simulans. Um, here is, again, our y, Mauritiana Y uh, introgression. Here is our Odysseus introgression. So that piece is sufficient to cause almost complete male sterility. Um, and then if we put in the Mauritiana Y chromosome, you know, we don't recover wild type levels of fertility, but we certainly dramatically boost fertility. Um, so we think that at least part of the story uh, is indeed that this errant binding, this inappropriate binding of Odysseus to um, the simulans Y chromosome is in part responsible for uh, sterility. Okay, so um, ultimately we'd like to know what evolutionary forces fixed these changes. Um, and there are lots of different hypotheses that have been proposed. And the, the one that I've been focused on is the idea of meiotic drive. So the idea that, that selfish genetic elements on the sex chromosomes can arise. Um, they cause sex ratio distortion. They increase in a population, frequent, in their frequency in a population through their own selfish behavior. Um, and then they select for, um, right, they select for repressors and um, resistant loci, and that this turnover is what's driving this rapid evolution of hybrid sterility. So how this might work, you have an excellent distorter. Um, it's going to kill Y-bearing sperm. This male is going to produce an excess of daughters and potentially suffer reduced fertility or at least reduced sperm competitive ability. Um, that skewed sex ratio and loss of fertility results in the selection pressure for uh, autosomal loci to evolve suppression of that excellent suppressor, of that excellent driver, excuse me. Um, or for the Y chromosome to become resistant. If, it can, if it's got a target sequence and it can lose that, um, then uh, it, can, it can evade the uh, excellent driver. And in Drosophila simulans and other systems, we have, there's lots of evidence that this is happening. Um, so uh, what evidence do we have that this underlies any of the hybrid male sterility? Well, uh, I can't tell you for sure that Odysseus was a driver, but this sure sounds like Odysseus, right? So the Mauritiana allele of Odysseus binds to um, the simulans Y, but not its own. So that's consistent with a model where at one point it was a driver. It was targeting the Mauritiana Y chromosome, and as a result, the Mauritiana Y chromosome lost those sequences. And so Odysseus, the Mauritiana allele, no longer binds uh, to its own Y chromosome. Um, we have other, a little bit more direct evidence uh, of a role of meiotic drive in hybrid male sterility. Um, in this cross, uh, and that comes from both um, 
older work from Yun Tao, who mapped an autosomal sterility factor that he called Timmy, uh, too much yin. He called it that because in addition to um, causing sterility, it caused, so in some cases it caused uh, semi-sterility, um, but those males produced almost exclusively daughters. So there's a single locus that seemed to be doing both hybrid sterility and um, sex ratio distortion. And then recently work from Eric Lai's lab actually molecularly identified Timmy. Um, and it turns out that Timmy is not a protein coding gene. Um, it is a, a locus that encodes a small hairpin RNA. Um, so it's got this inverted repeat structure. Um, this is processed by Dicer uh, in the testis and targets a X-linked distorter um, also studied by Yun Tao known as DOCS. And there are two copies, DOCS and MDOCS. Uh, and it seems like Timmy, at least based on homology, could potentially uh, target both of them. So here we have a hybrid sterility factor, uh, an autosomal one that is also a suppressor of an excellent distorter. So great, this seems like a really tight story. Or is it? Um, so what about DOCS? Is DOCS one of our excellent hybrid sterility factors? Well, in fact, it certainly is not. Um, so DOCS and MDOCS sit right here in this zone um, that, that is fertile. So this is, is not at all near to a hybrid sterility locus. Um, and it gets weirder than that. Um, so coming back to our introgression study, um, of those 48 introgressed regions, 47 of them are autosomal. Only a single one is X-linked. That is a significant um, reduction of introgression in the X chromosome, and that makes sense given that the X chromosome is riddled with this hybrid sterility. You might expect that that would prevent uh, introgression between these species. Um, and what is that uh, in that 130 KB introgressed region uh, but DOCS and MDOCS? Um, so, uh, in contrast to this being a hybrid sterility factor, this uh, actually introgressed between species. Um, and so these are the uh, genealogies actually of the MDOCs and the DOCs uh, loci. Um, and so you can see that um, Mercian alleles in green are very similar, almost identical to a subset of the simulans alleles. Uh, so our model is that through its ability to target Y chromosomes and increase in frequency by its selfish behavior, this locus jumped from one species into the other. We don't really know the direction yet. Um, and in doing so, it either was able to jump into the other species because that region didn't have any linked hybrid sterility factors. It didn't bring with it any linked hybrid sterility factors. Um, furthermore, if the recipient species, if there were hybrid sterility factors in that region, they would have been erased by the movement of this sequence from the donor species into the recipient. Um, so um, in a sense, uh, we dox and mdox by moving between species, it either was able to do that because there, wasn't, there were no incompatibilities there, or it may have erased them if they were there. Um, so, uh, so far we can see that sex ratio disorders, it's, it's more complicated. Um, they mo they mo may both promote uh, and undo speciation, um, and so there may be, you know, the balance between those may depend on the amount of gene flow and how common these things are. Um, so I will end there with some acknowledgments and take any questions you might have.